band. It's Redemption Band Unplugged today. Redemption Band Unplugged. Thank you. That was gorgeous. Good morning again, church. Morning. Welcome. Welcome to New Albany Methodist. My name is Jen Klima. I'll be your worship leader this morning, and I'm so excited to see all of you. There's so many of you. I'm so excited, and I know there's even more at home. Very excited to worship with you today. Before we get started, I want you to turn to the folks around you and just tell them hello. Just say hi. Hi, Van. 
Hello, everyone at home. Yeah. All right. Greeting got easier today, didn't it? All right, you guys can have a seat. So we have a lot going on today. It's very exciting. So we're starting a new sermon series, okay? We're starting a new sermon series, and um, we also have communion, and we also have some really important commissioning to do for our youth today. So today's message is pack a cooler. It's pack a cooler. I want you to think of that. I'm going to read. I'm going to read a snippet of our reading today from John chapter six. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, it would take more than a half year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two fish, but how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. Okay, so pack a cooler. Why, would we pack, why do we pack a cooler? You can yell it out. Why do you pack a cooler? Snacks? Right? What else? Drinks, maybe? But why do you do it? Like, why do you pack a cooler and bring it along? Prepare. You're preparing for something. You're anticipating that you're going to need cold drinks or snacks or, you know, a cold dish, something like that. But you're trying to prepare, right, when you pack a cooler. So in the reading, right, we see that there was really no way to prepare for 5,000 people showing up, right? So what happened? You know, I, I think a lot of times the takeaway from this message ends up being, well, if only the, those, those silly disciples, if only they'd have had faith. Well, that's part of it. But actually, what I like about this story and what I find in everyday life is that you have the boy. You have the boy that's there with his meager supplies who's willing to share, right? How often have you gone out and, I don't know, for me, a lot of times it's I show up at dance or gymnastics and I don't have a hair tie, and there's always another mom that has one. Or maybe you, you know, maybe you're on a trip and it starts raining and you don't have an umbrella, but somebody else does. Or, you know, maybe you forgot to pack a snack or cold drinks or something like that, and there's somebody there to share, right? That's, that's Jesus putting those people in front of us. And that happens to me nearly every weekend here because I will try to prepare some thoughts for, to, to say to you all, right, that, that are somewhat coherent and related to, to, to a message, right? <laughs> <laughs> somewhat. But then, like, I will have forgotten there's communion or there's something else going on or we're taking a different direction, or even better, I get here and someone gives me some inspiration, right? So try as I might to prepare, something always happens, but there's always someone there to help me, to inspire me, to give me words, to, to, to remind me of why we're here and why we do this. And what I pray for all of you is that you notice that in your everyday life, right? Do you notice that in your everyday life and that you are the boy with the loaves and fishes to share with others when they're in need? So as we prepare for today's message, will you all pray with me? Oh dear God, I, I think I say this every weekend and I will continue to say it every weekend. Thank you for this community of faith. Thank you for giving us a safe place to land, to be ourselves, to love you, to worship you, and to be together. And in your name we pray. Amen.
Pastor Frank, you didn't melt. That's good. It's great to see you. We are thrilled to be here with you. And we've got some friends that are going to join us up front. I think our Transformation Zone group is coming so that we can commission you as missionaries for our Lord Jesus Christ. Gene, tell us about it. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Pastor Gene. I'm a missions pastor and we've been doing transformation zone for the last thir- this will be our 13th year of doing it typically it's it's a, a week away in Marysville but in the last two years we've been doing it closer to home we meet here in the mornings so this lovely group right here is just a part of that their important part is that they're representing the other 26 people that are going to be going as long and as well as a number of adults that will be helping with it, we will be going to the uh, bed brigade ministry and in uh, delivering beds. We're going to go to the lifeline and and uh, pack meals. We're going to go to Little Bottoms and do various tasks so they can open up in the fall. There's so many things that are going to be going on. We're, we're filling the lunches for open shelter, so there's much much happening. Donna and Dave have been my faithful cohorts for years. 
If I didn't know what litter bom bottoms was. Well, if you didn't know, then <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's a free store that's in the Franklinton area, and that particular zip code has a hard time. Um, they have one, one of the highest statistics for children dying before the age of one. And so all the people that are um, served through this store, the efforts are that what they will help them with will make it possible for those children to make it to their first birthday. So um, it's, it's very necessary, and we can all become a part of it, and, and you'll be hearing more about that in the future. The Bed Brigade, we're making beds for people who don't have beds, and so we're gonna deliver them to the families that need them. They'll get a mattress and a blanket. And our VBS actually tied some of the blankets that we're going to be distributing uh, this week. So um, much more, much more happens, but I can't name everything. Plus, every day is a new surprise. <laughs> so, if you'd like to pray over us. Well, one thing that I would like to say to all of you is what you are doing is profound and so exciting. Did you hear what Pastor Gene said? You will have the opportunity to help children make it to their first birthday. You know who else was in danger of not making it to his first birthday? Jesus. Because the forces of the world were out to get him from the very beginning. What you're doing is tender and bold. It's heroic and it's generous. And that's the way Jesus intends for you to be. So now I'm, I get the privilege of having a prayer because we're going to commission you as missionaries. Can we do that? Yep. I can do it. Dear God, we just thank you. Thank you for these courageous and generous and kind sons and daughters of yours who go forth in your name. For some, it's the first time to do this kind of a heroic measure. And for others, they're well, well aware of the joy that they will receive by offering themselves their laughter and their love and their kindness and even their nervousness as they begin again. So help us, Lord, to feel your nearness. Help us to feel authentically that we go in your name and watch over us each one as we are healers and helpers in the name of Jesus. And all the people said, amen. Okay. Thanks. We give ourselves in so many ways, and we're, uh, we are so proud of you, Gene, as you lead the Transformation Zone and uh, the many missions that our church is participating in weekly, monthly, annually. Um, and and we, we give our time and our talent and our treasure, and we're going to do something radical this, this morning. We're actually going to give, we're going to... Uh, receive an offering from you in the pews so i know we've got a team that's ready to do that and i'm going to bless this offering in advance dear god we just thank you we thank you for the way you call us to be generous because you were first generous toward us and we thank you lord for all those who are here this morning preparing to to make a generous offering to the ministry to this outpost of faith located in this region of the world to do good to love kindness and to walk humbly with our God so we make this offering and we thank you for the the off the online gifts and the checks that are mailed to the church and we all in this effort are knitted together in love so help us as our transformation zone missionaries go forth Help us also to be bold as we support in love what you intend to do in this place. And we pray in Christ's name. Amen.
as our uh, helpers wait upon us, I'm going to start. We have communion at the end of the service, and I might say to our online congregation, keep in mind that we will be having receiving communion, and we encourage you to find a morsel of bread or a uh, and a bit of juice or water or wine that you would use to realize that this is Jesus' gift to us. So we'll be prepared for that as we go. Let's pray together. Oh, dear God, dear Jesus, speak to us so that we can hear this very day. Call us. Claim us. Make us your own. Amen. Everybody's got baggage. Everybody's got summer baggage. This year, everybody's got summer baggage. We're trying to figure out how to do summer again. If you're anything like me, you're, we're trying to figure out how to do summer again and what we should feel comfortable doing and things that we're still a little cautious of. So I want to say, at the beginning, uh, as we expect to receive communion at the end of this service, we'll be calling you forward through the center aisle and then sending you out to return to your seats by the side aisle. And I'll have the bread, I think. Uh, I, Jean gets to tell me what to do. So I think I have the bread. And, um, and then we'll have the cup on each side. We'll have individual cups, more similar to what we have done in the past, but we're not going to be dipping the bread. So individual cups, and then you can go back to your seats having received communion. Now I want to say, you, if you may be uncomfortable kind of joining the procession for whatever reason uh, with everybody else, we'll wait on you. We'll, we will wait on you after the service if you would like to have personal communion at the altar with us. Because in every way, we can accommodate you. Because that is exactly what Jesus does. Okay? Everybody has baggage. Sometimes, and I'm, you know, I'm thinking about a little anxiousness, a little, uh, maybe, uh, uh, maybe we're so enthusiastic about reopening and re getting, getting back to uh, our normal, whatever that is, that we can hardly stand it. Maybe everybody in the family, perhaps, isn't all, all the, on the same page. Uh, some people may want to do one thing in a family and some people want to do something else and we all want, to, want it to happen right now. In my family, we, you know, we're kind of all spread out all, all over the place. Um, Adam's getting ready to have his long-delayed honeymoon. You know, he got married last summer and now they're going to get a chance to go away and, and we prayerfully send them forth. Uh, Joe and Christelle, Joe, Joe is in Nashville. They FaceTimed us this morning, as they usually do in the morning. And Christelle's getting ready to take Axel, their one-year-old, to France to meet her family for the very first time. That's pretty, pretty awesome. They're making all the preparations that they need to make. When I was a kid, my mom, when we would go from Cleveland to Nebraska, which we did every year, because my parents were both from Nebraska, we'd, make, we'd, pa we'd pile all seven of us in the car and the dog, roll the windows down, and hope for the best. We always started early in the morning because uh, Dad wanted to get um, part of the trip under his belt before we all woke up. And Mom would pack the cooler. And because there were seven of us and a dog, there were all, were all kinds of things that needed to be packed in that cooler. One thing that is interesting and that I'm thankful for that I had, I had a mother who would think about what each one liked to eat. So my mom knew that I, I really love a peanut butter sandwich with Smucker's strawberry jam. 
and she'd always pack that. Um, so, somebody else liked a tuna fish. <laughs> yeah, so she packed some of that. There would be something that was packed for all of us. And that's the way God packs your cooler today. There's something in this holy meal for all of us. Prepared in love for you as you are making your journey. As you are making your journey this day. So I, I heard, I, I agree with Jen. Um, I'm always intrigued by the little boy that comes to hear Jesus and he has a packed lunch. He has a packed lunch, five barley, small barley loaves, two fish. So think about this. Somebody packed that lunch. Likely his mother wrapping it in a cloth. This will be enough for the day. This will be the enough for the day. And at that moment, that crucial moment, when they are on the hillside and the people, 5,000 men, so there were many more people than the 5,000, by the way, when that crucial moment came and that boy was asked about his lunch, the Lord has need of it, he gave it all. He didn't say, okay, you can have one barley loaf and half a fish. I might be a one barley loaf, half a fish kind of guy if I were in that position, but not this boy. He, he gave it all. And God can do something with that. As small as it seems to us now, don't you ever doubt what God can do with your offering that you can make today because God has placed enough in you to make a difference in the world. We're sending missionaries out who are going to be making sandwiches and, and working with the ministry of Little Bottom so, so infants can have a chance at life. How big is that? They are going to be making and delivering beds to people who have never had a bed in their life. How big is that? Oh, but I'm only a youth. Oh, you are a youth. But don't say only. Because God has placed in you enough to make that crucial difference in a child and a family he loves. Paul Bruner tells a wonderful story about a young man named Jeff. Jeff learned one Sunday morning that his church was going to have a potluck uh, lunch, lunch and picnic, picnic potluck lunch. And so he hurried home after church, and he was going to pack his lunch, and he opened his refrigerator, and it was one of those days, and there just wasn't anything fitting for him to take as a lunch to this to this. Uh, little picnic and all he had was a couple of pieces of bread a piece of bologna and and he did hardly enough mustard that would uh, color the knuckles on his on his hand when he tried to scoop it out but he packed his lunch packed his little bologna sandwich and he put it in a big bag so it would look like he brought more than he actually had to the lunch and then when he got there because he'd spent time fussing about this a bologna sandwich, when he got there, there was only one seat left, and it was by the Lawson family. And 
sheepishly, he kind of sat down with his large paper bag. And he took his sandwich from the bag and began to unwrap it, and the Lawsons began to spread their feast as well. They had warm, uh, a warm checkered tablecloth, heaps of chicken on a plate, potato salad, baked beans that smelled like heaven. And to top it off, Mrs. Lawson had brought two of her famous chocolate pies, chocolate cream pies. He glanced and then glanced at his sandwich. In a moment, Jeff felt Mrs. Lawson's hand on his shoulder. Why don't we pool our food and we can all share each other's lunch? Oh, no, I can't do I'm, I, I'm not very hungry. I'm not very hungry. And I, I just have this little sandwich, and that, that'll be enough for me. And he says, no, we love bologna sandwiches. And we're just going to cut your sandwich up so we can all have some of it, and then we'll all share lunch together. Well, there's Jeff. He came to the picnic potluck lunch as a pauper and ate like a prince. Some would say that that's what happened on that hillside that day, that, that there was a, a boy with five loaves and two fish, and, and because of his generosity, other people who actually had secretly lunch stored away, stashed away, hidden from everybody, they suddenly became inspired to share and be generous. That may be part of the story. I've seen it happen before. People need to be shown how to open their hearts to each other. Have you ever seen it happen? Yeah, you've seen it. I have too. Jen Klima, you were mentioning um, you go to a gymnastics meet and somebody has an extra hair tie. Beth and I were traveling from Bowling Green to Columbus. We were coming home from college. We were, that was, you know, we were this curious married student uh, uh, denomination at Bowling Green State University. Well, there weren't very many of us. And we had this old, uh, old car, uh, and, and, and it, it broke down in Ada. It was, late to Saturday, it was late on a Saturday afternoon. We were just going home for the weekend. And in Ada, Ohio, we found, we, we rolled into, we rolled into a, a filling station, you know, a gas station that had the repair bays and, it's, and so forth. And we went and we said, I think there's, I, I knew what to do. I opened the hood and I looked inside. And then I said to the filling station attendant, I said, I think there's something wrong with that propeller thing on the front of my car. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, that propeller thing, you think you're trying to fly at home? And he did a little, uh, a little research. And it was our water pump. So he said, hop in my car, or hop in my truck. We have to go to the next town. We had to, we had to go to Alger, where there was an auto parts store. And we made a quick drive over there. He brought, bought a, an auto part, we, uh, a water pump, installed it in our car. I said, I, I, don't have anything, I don't have anything to pay with. He says, well, you said you were just going home for the weekend. Are you coming back this way? Pay us when you get back. You ever known someone like that? That was 1976. And I'm still telling you about it. God reminds us that we're called to be generous. And God shows us how because we share this broken bread and love poured out in the cup of wonder. He shows us how to be generous because he is first generous 
toward us. Philip was, Philip is the guy who doesn't seem to have enough faith in this story. How can we feed all these people? It would cost half a year's wages. But Andrew says, Philip, we do have this boy with five loaves and two fish. And Jesus says, bring him to me. What if the boy said, this is my lunch and you can't have it? What if the boy said, I'm, I'm too scared to talk to this man that we've all heard so much about. And so, the boy came. It's not much, but Jesus, this is all I have. It's enough, son. It's more than enough. So Jesus took the bread and he broke it and he took the fish and he shared them. He didn't place it back in the disciples' hands. He, he personally took the bread and broke it as he personally takes the bread and breaks it for you this day. And then they distributed lunch. And there were leftovers, 12 baskets full of leftovers. And this was a sign to the people. You know, the Gospel of John is filled with signs, miracles and signs, signs of what? Christ came into the world to fulfill that you may believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and believing you may have life in his name. That you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that be in believing you may have life in his name. And so this was a sign. So let me ask you something about your faith. You may have heard of or read some things by Jim Wallace. Wallace is a, an evangelical activist. And when he was in seminary, once Wallace took his, some scissors to his Bible. Might sound a little sacrilegious, took scissors to his Bible. And he is and his fellow classmates decided that they would do surgery on all 66 books of the Bible, beginning with Genesis not stopping till Revelation, and each time a verse spoke to the topic of poverty, wealth, justice, or oppression, they cut it out. By the time they had finished, nearly 2,000 verses lay on the floor, and the book was tattered, and they discovered what it was like if you cut concern for the poor out of its heart. 
They, were, they wanted to see what the Bible would look like if you took compassion out of it. What they discovered is a compassionless Bible isn't much to look at. One more story and then I'm through. There's a legend about Martin of Tours who was said to be the first military chaplain. He followed the Roman army from place to place, ministering to the soldiers and to the people in those places that they conquered. One cold winter day, he was following the Roman army into a city. There was a beggar at the city gates, freezing from the cold and asking for alms. Martin had been in the field with the soldiers for weeks. He had neither coin nor crust of bread. So he took off the battered old Roman soldier's cloak he had over his shoulders. And with his sword, he cut that cloak in two pieces. On half of the cloak, one half of the cloak he gave to the beggar, and one half of the cloak he kept for himself. That night, Martin had a dream in which he found himself to be an observer of the scene of a scene in heaven. He saw Jesus surrounded by angels. And to his surprise, the Lord Jesus was wearing half of a Roman soldier's cloak. One of the angels asked Jesus, Master, where did you get that old, dirty, torn half of a Roman soldier's cloak? And in a soft silence as the angels waited for Jesus to reply, Martin heard Jesus say, My good servant, Martin, gave it to me. My good servant, Martin, gave it to me. Friends, in the Gospel of John, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the way the truth and the life. I am the good shepherd. I am the vine. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the living water. What do you need for him to be as you come forward to receive this holy meal on this day? Now, you don't need to be a member of this church. You don't need to be a member of any church to receive this holy meal. If you draw near in faith, he longs to share this meal with you. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took the cup, or he took the bread, and he gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when supper was over, after he had given thanks, he gave to his disciples the cup. And he said, this is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. This is the cup of wonder. This is God's love poured out. God first is so generous towards you. Will you pray with me as we prepare to receive this bread and this cup? Oh, dear and gracious God, we ask you to, we ask you to be present with us. 
through your body, which is broken, through your cup, which is your blood. Make them be the real presence for us. And make your real spirit live within us because, because we have come. You are the bread of life. You are the cup of wonder. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen. And so the fo folks would along the back row would come by the center aisle beginning and then we'll go row by row uh, coming from the back to the front.
so Jesus said, Jesus said that, said the I am statements, proclamations in the Gospel of John. I am the bread of life. I am living water. I am the good shepherd. I am the vine. I am the resurrection and the life. Who do you need Jesus to be in your life today? And will he become so alive in you that when you encounter each other and when you go forth from this place and you missionaries go forth to meet people that you yet have had, that you have not yet had a chance to meet, will they say, because you have come, I am is here. I am. The great I am has come. Go forth now. You have taken him into yourself. Let others know. I am. The great I am has come. Amen.